So I was watching Mike Winger, and uh, which is uh, a guy on YouTube who does um, these 10 questions. And I was listening to the end of it. It's one of the last questions. It's really like the last maybe two or three minutes of the video. And he made a reference to David, King David, and the show bread, which is the holy bread that's put out by the high priest. And now I understand that God was very directly referencing something that I had in my heart, which was it's something you can't make up. Like, I'm literally telling you the way in which the revelation came. It came through a dream. It came in this very interesting in full display form of me waking up abruptly on a Saturday earlier than I needed to in order to make bread and this issue of the 12, 12 tri tribes of Israel being placed upon my heart um, through the breastplate of righteousness as I'm making bread, the reference to the show bread was given. And then sure enough, Matthew 12, 2, 3, Jesus says to them, because I guess um, Jesus is walking through the fields, you know, and they're taking the grain and, and kind of rolling the grain between their fingers and eating parts of the grain because they're hungry. The high priest catch them because apparently they're hyper watching them like these guys are like spies. So the high priests come around and they catch Jesus doing this. And they say, look, he's working on the Sabbath because anytime you're, you're walking too far or you're doing anything that makes food, it's a considered a type of work. So you, so it's almost like it's a law not to work. And Jesus corrects that situation, basically says it's, it's made for man to rest. And in times of emergency, starvation, issues with needing to get by or a question of survival, even David, King David, was in a situation where the holy bread that's meant for the high priest to make for God as showbread, they, were, they actually gave it to David to survive. So Jesus puts that all in a big, beautiful picture of you got to watch your heart position, your heart posture, because if you start making God all burden and not one with reason, understanding, and mercy that be, that's beyond the understanding and ways of a human being. It's almost like we make God less compassionate than people. It's almost like we make him um, overbearing and burdensome on purpose. I know that's not really the original intention. They're just trying to overserve God. But at the same time, it makes a pin, it paints a picture of God that just isn't accurate. God knows your heart. He actually knows your thoughts, your words, and he can separate these things like the bone from the marrow. This is the Bible verse that says this. And he can search you deep within you. He knows what's happening inside of you. And I think that's what that dream was about, is that the reason why the light, the flashlight was pushed through the door and I was trying to push the flashlight out and I was begging my dad to help me. I think God was saying, I am helping you. I'm searching your heart and I see what's wrong. I see, I see you. And he took, you know, something that nobody else takes seriously, but I do, which is not to work on Sabbath. And the fact that I just will change Sabbath out for Sunday, but deep in my heart, I really believe Sabbath is Saturday. And so I find my rest does better, like like my energy level is better when I use Saturday to rest so that Sunday can be a day where I can do all my work and then, you know, my housework and then go to work again. So this weekend, I technically didn't get a Sabbath and that's the game. You know, the game is you can trick yourself into saying, I'll just make Sunday Sabbath, but aren't you also doing your laundry because you've got to get ready for the next week. You have to go get groceries. You have to run around town. You have to pay your bills because you worked all, all week for six days. So now Sunday's the only day you get to do this stuff. So you get to play a little game with your mind, but your body and your energy makes it clear like that didn't work. And so God addressed that very directly. And I'm just telling you that if he does this with things as small as that, which I think to God is a big deal, um, how much greater does he know and search you 
and know your heart. And this is how the revelation of the Holy Spirit does actually work. It literally comes over time, as I've made it clear. I don't know, it's because I'm just not clever or what, but the Holy Spirit will make it abundantly clear. I literally looked up what flashlight means biblically. What is the symbolism of it? And it means revelation. It means God's revelation. You can Google it. And God is... He's always just trying to talk to us. And sometimes we get so busy that we don't ask ourselves when we get dreams like that or the tap on the spirit at three in the morning, we go, we don't, we go, oh, that's weird that I was woken up at three in the morning. Oh, that's weird that I can't sleep. Instead, ask God and lean upon his understanding and say, God, what are you, what's happening? Is there something going on within the brethren? Is there something happening with the saints? Is there something happening around the world that major prayer needs to be happen, happening? Like right now, there's a, uh, there was a major storm in China, which by the way, none of the news is talking about. None of it. They had to... Um, they had to move 400,000 people away from the shores of and, and, and move them all into in, inland China because of how massive and scary this huge storm was. It was a Category 5. Nobody's talking about it. It's something you see on TikTok, but, and it's major damage. So maybe God is trying to tell the saints because there are saints there and people who are suffering that we should be praying for them. And sometimes you get a wild dream and you go, what could this mean? But if you're leaning upon the understanding of the Holy Spirit and really pulling hard on the Bible, that's the only way you're ever going to find the truth. You're not going to be able to just guess or look at some for, you know, was it Jung? Jung has this dream archetype and symbolism stuff. Lean upon the understanding of the Bible. That's where all the sources of these archetypes come from, the one who made us, the one who programmed us. So I'm telling you in real time, which I think is really the reason why these videos are important, is these revelations come sometimes days later, where I've, you know, have to like step away from it a little bit and go back to it and say, what is God trying to say to me? What is God telling me? Why is he saying you work for me? You know, um, just like Jesus walking through the field. I'm not saying I'm Jesus, by the way. He was working for the Father. And I think my heart was crying out, Abba, to hit God. I think my, my heart was saying, you know, in, in a way that he could speak to me, he's saying, I can hear the cries of your heart. You know, this is one little thing that I know I can hear. And I know you recognize, you know, it's biblical and I know it's biblical. I can hear the cries of your heart. I'm listening to you. I think that's what God was saying. And that is a hello. Absolutely. You know, that's a, yeah, I'm here. I'm listening. I hear you. So anyway, this is Land of Christ is King Forever. Um, if you have dreams like this or you feel like God is trying to say something to you, the best way to understand what he's saying is to have a better understanding of the Bible and the language the Bible speaks because it will mold your mind and your soul and your spirit, especially through the Holy Spirit in repentance to what God is trying to tell you. This is how you hear him. You don't hear him because he comes down from heaven and looks at you in the face and tells you what you need to hear. You, that's not the way you want it to happen anyway. The way he hears you is through you knowing the Bible, you asking for the Holy Spirit, you accepting you know, the molding of the one who created us, and knowing that the end game is to, is to teach us how to be sanctified so we can walk with him you know, in person again. So... Um, this is Linda of Crisis King Forever. May God be with you.